So, growing up in Seattle, most of my favorite fiddlers and musical heroes were old-time musicians. And this old-time means the music that comes from North Carolina, West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, and several other Appalachian and Southern states. Um, and usually in configurations with banjo, guitar, bass, mandolin, and fiddle. This old-time music dates back to when Scots and Irish settlers arrived in the Appalachian Mountains during the 17th and 18th centuries and brought their fiddles, guitars, and tunes with them. It is the precursor to bluegrass music. Old-time musicians are really obsessed with preserving an old tradition and learning tunes from old scratchy recordings of fiddlers from the early 20th, early 20th century. So there are many more scratchy recordings where that one came from. Um, the banjo is also originally a West African instrument, and during the transatlantic slave trade, it was appropriated in the New World by white minstrel musicians. The addition of the banjo significantly changed the tunes. Banjo players sometimes play with a claw hammer style, it involves holding your hand in this claw shape and strumming like this. that on a banjo. Um, this style of claw hammer rhythm added a rhythmic pulse to the music and rendered tunes much simpler melodically and much more complex rhythmically, specifically with bowing. Um, this happened to that tune called Flowers of Edinburgh. Um, I learned the version I'm about to play from a recording of Alt Gar Art Galbraith, a fiddler from Springfield, Missouri. His great-grandfather Andrew Galbraith, a dancing master in East Tennessee, handed him down this version from at least 1840. Um, the A and B part have switched. I'll refer to them as the high part and the low part regarding the pitch. And there's an extra beat in the low part that makes the tune crooked. So it doesn't have an even number of beats in the A part or the B part, and thus it couldn't be danced to. Now I'll invite up Stuart Lyons to join me on guitar. You might see me kick my foot up or say one more time to indicate the end of a tune. Since the fiddle is kind of the leading the tune, um, fiddlers must communicate with the guitar or banjo players to alert when it's going to end. And um, Stuart will play a boom chuck rhythm style of guitar, which is intended to keep the rhythm going steady forward, kind of like a train, while the fiddle kind of dances melodically on top of it.
from a Virginia fiddler named John Ashby. It's called Going to the Free State. Um, I'm going to tune my fiddle from this standard GDAE tuning, which sounds like this, to cross tuning, which I will show you in a moment. I'll adjust this, but it sounds like this. Irish step dance. 
The tunes are My Mind Will Never Be Easy and Fig for a Kiss. very similar to this tune that comes from Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia. When I first started taking fiddle lessons, I went to a concert by a fiddler named Natalie McMaster, um, and she's from the tiny island of Cape Breton. She was so talented and such an energetic performer that I was so inspired by the buoyancy and joy of her music. In Cape Breton, there are more fiddlers per capita than any other place in the world. They often gather together in kitchen parties where a fiddle is passed around a circle and each person plays a medley of tunes with the pianist. Step dancers are dancing along. Um, the Cape Breton fiddler named Brenda Stubbert plays that slip jig that I just started with, but she calls it, my mind will never be AZ, which that word has Gaelic roots that um, traveled across the Atlantic. She picked the tune from her, she picked up the tune from her father's playing um, again, this is all part of like an oral and aural tradition. Now it is not a slip jig anymore. It has been evened out to be in 6-8, um, and it also has been sped up. So here's the first phrase of the Irish version. This is the Cape Breton version. And, um, uh, it does have, uh, Cape Breton music does have the same type of triplet and grace note accents that Irish music does, but a characteristic Cape Breton um, ornament is called, in classical music, often called a mordant, which sounds like this slowed down. But people in Cape Breton call it the Cape Breton wiggle, and it sounds like this sped up. Um, though I won't be playing this set with accompaniment on these tunes, um, the piano is often an essential element to Cape Breton fiddle music. Its syncopated rhythms create bouncy, lively feel that contrasts with the darker, drowsier sound of Irish music. This driving beat propels a downward energy that matches Cape Breton step dancers and their goal of keeping their feet, quote, close to the floor and their upper body relatively sturdy. I'll try to play with that same syncopated downward energy. 
And here's a set of tunes um, from Kate Breton that start with that version of My Mind Will Never Be AZ. first instead of a melody. 
Um, and then we'll finally play a tune that I wrote um, inspired by old time music. It's called Snowtown. I started writing this tune last year at this time during a very long snowy winter, <laughs> feeling very ready for spring. Thank you so much for coming out to this recital tonight, and I hope you enjoyed the last two tunes. Thank you.